in this lesson 3-7, five minute warm up, algebraic reasoning. The instructions say, suppose you make squares with matchsticks. And we see a diagram below. Um, our squares are looking very rectangular, but we'll disregard that and continue. Look at the number of matchsticks needed to make a number of squares. Well, we can see here in one square, takes four matchsticks. Right, we would have one, two, three, four matchsticks all around the perimeter of the square, uh, and that would take four matchsticks. And we can see that number listed below. In order to make two squares, notice these are adjacent and they actually share a side, we would have the original four squares plus one, two, three more, and that would make a total of seven matchsticks uh, required. With three squares, well, we begin with the original two, which took seven matchsticks, and then to add one more square, well, like before, we're just adding three more matchsticks for a total of 10. And that pattern continues. Note, we're just adding three matchsticks to each figure before. So, in order to create four squares, it would take 13 matchsticks. And we can imagine this pattern continuing so for five squares, we would expect to use 13 matchsticks plus three more. Remember, it took 13 to make four squares, so we would add three more to that to get 16. So for five squares, we would be required <laughs> Item number two says, well, what about 10 squares? So we have some options here. We've got this idea going on that there's a pattern here. Uh, four plus three is seven, seven plus three is 10, 10 plus three is 13, 13 plus three is 16. 16 plus three would be 19. And we can just follow this pattern out. Six, five plus three, 28. Well, since there's a pattern here and we're just adding three each time, can't we use the pattern to find out how many matchsticks it would take for 10 squares uh, without writing out this pattern? And the answer is yes. But let's see how far we've gotten so far. For five, six, seven, eight, nine, well, let's just do one more. For a figure with 10 squares, now 28 plus two, 31. My arithmetic, uh, 13 plus 3, 16 plus 3, 19 plus 3, 22 plus 3, 25 plus 3, 28 plus 3. So I'm feeling pretty confident by doing all of this work and just running this pattern out uh, until we get to 10 squares, that that would require 31 matchsticks. But as I alluded to before, since there's a pattern here, we can come up with an expression that will help us find uh, the number of matchsticks required for any number of squares. What if question two, instead of asking us for 10 squares, had asked us for the number of matchsticks required to make 90 squares? I know I wouldn't have wanted to continue this pattern out until I got to 90, uh, especially when there's an easier way. Question number three asks us to consider n squares or find some way to relate the number of matchsticks to the number of squares when the number of squares is the variable n. So let's see if we can come up with that. The thing to consider before attempting to write this expression is what's going on, what patterns or what's repeating each time we add another square. Well, as we've seen before, we add three matchsticks for every new square we create. So off to the side here, maybe on scratch paper, I'm thinking, well, we're adding three more for each additional square uh, after the first one, right? Because the first one requires four uh, after the first one. This is my first video using this pen tool. 
So my handwriting is not quite my own. It's kind of interesting. I imagine I'll adjust. Maybe even by the end of this video, my handwriting will look a little bit more typical for me. But that first square, four matchsticks for the first square. That's getting a little more fluent. So we know we always have four, considering these patterns up above. We always have that initial square that takes four matchsticks. And then for each square after, we add three additional matchsticks. So four can be thought of as a constant. In every one of these uh, illustrations, we can always find those four original matchsticks. So in our expression, four will remain constant. We'll always be adding some four plus. Well, now we need to figure out what we add each time. And remember, n for us will represent the number of squares. So back up to the diagram above and consider, well, when n is 2, we're adding 3 to 4. All right, so plus 3. When n is 3, we have to add 6 to our constant 4. So n is 3, we're adding 6. And keep in mind, this is adding 6 to our original constant 4. I'm not saying that we're adding 6 to 7. That's not true. But I'm trying to relate our number of squares back to our original constant 4, the number of matchsticks we began with. Um, and then, well, I think we recognize we're adding 3 more than we added before. So that's going to be 6 plus 3 more. We would be adding 9. So what we need to recognize is that for every additional uh, number of squares, we're adding a certain number of groups of three. All right, so what we want to consider is that for every additional square, we're adding another group of three. So when n is two, we need to add one group of three to four. So one group, we switch colors. Uh, we'd add one group when, of three when n is two. When n is 3, we're adding two groups of 3 to our original number of matchsticks, 4. So two groups. When n is 4, well, 9 is three groups of 3. So we'd be adding three groups of 3. All we need is a pattern now that will get us from an n value of 2 to 1, an n value of 3 to 2, an n value of 4 to 3. So we want some simple operation that will work for us. It'll tell us how many groups of three to add based on any n value, any number of squares. Um, I think this is a pattern that should jump out to you. It seems that our value here in blue, the number of groups of three we need to add, is always one less than our value of n. So let's see where that takes us. So if we add four times, well, the quantity n minus one n minus 1 represented how many groups of 3 we needed. So if we wanted two groups of 3, for instance, um, we'd have 2. We have to multiply that by 3, right? Because that's how many groups of 3 we need. Also, it's a good indicator. Since this is a section we're working in, writing expressions, we've done a lot of work recently with the distributive property. And so you've seen a lot of values written this way, a lot of expressions with some number on the outside of a, a binomial, in parentheses, um, where we could distribute, right? We could distribute the three into both terms inside the parentheses. Um, so that's a good indicator that this is the kind of setup we may be looking for for this problem. But let's test it. First, let's rethink about this expression we've created. So no matter how many squares, we're always gonna start with four match sticks. That's correct, that's what we've talked about. And then we would add a certain number of groups of three to that based on n. And another interruption, uh, program quitting unexpectedly. If I remember right, we were discussing how it's important once you have an expression and you think it is the correct answer to check it. Uh, plug in some values that you know are going to be true and see if they work, see if your expression works. Now, I'm not sure if we were cut off uh, before, but I'm gonna recheck 
uh, four squares. So when we have four squares, or n equals four, we know we should get 13 for our matchsticks. Our number of matchsticks should be 13. So if we plug in four for n and consider four minus one is three, three times three is nine, and nine plus four, sure enough, is 13. So our expression checks out for four. Um, what about 10 squares? Let's see if it works for 10, this value that we uh, wrote out manually, kind of the brute force method. We just kept doing the work until we got to. If I substitute 10 for n, 10 minus 1 is 9. 9 times 3, 27. 27 plus 4, yeah, sure enough, 31. So this is looking good for our expression. It's probably a good idea to check at least one more value. So let's try 1. Let's see if it works for 1. When we have one square, we would expect to have four matchsticks. So substitute one. One minus one is zero. Zero times three, still zero. And zero plus four is four. So I think we can be confident that our expression is correct and that this will give us the number of matchsticks for any number of squares n, including 99.